Yo. What up, guys? What up, guys? So today I'm gonna show you how to make a patch with a punch needle. Punch needle. Punch needle. Punch needle. Punch. 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 So first off, a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. First 500 who sign up get two months free. So I have the fabric, a hoop, punch needle, and floss. First thing I did was I drew out on the fabric and kind of labeled what colors are gonna go where, like the, the number to color, color number. What's that called? Anyways, with the fabric over the small hoop, you can then get your larger hoop, loosen it, and then put it on top. Then make sure it's nice and tight and pull the fabric tight. Next, what you're gonna do is load the punch needle. You push your thread through the pointy part of your punch needle, pull your floss through. There's a flat and a curved open side. With your thread through the open part, you push your thread through the flat part, thread it, pull it. Then you just gotta keep the open part in the direction you're going and make sure the needle stays really close to the fabric as you go. Okay, so let's see that in real life. So you pull your thread through the front, then you thread the hole in the needle and you're good to go. Nice. So I have a video where I go through more of the basics or how to punch needle, and I'll put a link to that right here. When using a punch needle, this that I'm working on right here that you can see would technically be the back. The front side is gonna be the opposite side with all the loops. I forgot this, so the OX is actually gonna be backwards and say XO. Whoops. When ending your last stitch, you just pull it up, cut it, and after loading your new color, or maybe the same color, you just keep going until you're done. 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 Nice. So after cleaning up the front loop side, there's some spots that I wanted to be a little thicker, and so I went back through with a punch needle. Kept checking underneath to make sure it's how I wanted it. So I need a little bit more black. And then checked again. That time, yeah, it looked good. So next thing you're going to do is you're going to take some iron-on adhesive and there's like a plastic side and then like a matte paper side. You're going to put the plastic side down on the back of your patch and iron it on. Make sure it's nice and iron around all the edges. What this does is this helps it from unzipping. Remember when you use a punch needle, all you're doing is just making little loops on the back so with one little tug, it would just come out. So this should help keep it from doing that, which would be nice as a patch. After that, cut out your patch. You're gonna wanna leave about 1 8 of an inch of fabric around your patch. This is what's gonna be the border. So pick the color of your border. I went with black and thread your needle. Make sure you have enough slack and then cut it. You're gonna start from the back of the patch as close as you can get to the design and pull, all, and pull it up. Make sure at the end of your thread there's a knot so it stops. Then what you're gonna do is come again from the back as close as you can get for your last stitch and make a little loop. And do the same thing. Come from the back as close as your last stitch, make a loop. And again, make another loop. And again, another loop. And again, and again, again, until you have like a little border thing. And you can do that all the way to meet up with your very first stitch. To end, come through the front this time. And you're going to make a knot in the back. That way, it won't be seen from the front. Nice. Cut that off. And you're good to go. Except what I do... I don't really like the iron on, I have this pill and stick. How it works is it has two protective layers. You take one of the protective layers off, lay your patch down, face up, cut off all the excess sticky stuff. Then you have one more protective layer that you can peel off, which leaves this like sticky residue stuff. And with that, you can just press that onto whatever you want, like a jacket. But surprise. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to try one more. This time I'm use black fabric. And to get the image on there, I'm going to use tracing paper. I decided on the cat one, because I had less small detail. 
So take the tracing paper and cut out a size, roughly the size of your image. And there's a side that's supposed to be face down and that's face up. You can test this by putting it down and if it leaves a mark, that's the right side. So go ahead and put your image down. I just dropped this piece to, so I could save it more. Then tape it down. But when I was doing that, I realized what I wanted to do is I wanted to make this side the front. So the loop side, I'm going to actually make the back. So I'm going to do it face up. Then I went ahead and traced it out, and good, it's good. Ready to start. So if I wanted this to be the back, I would have put my image face down. That way I wouldn't have like the mixed up OX like I did on the last one. Does that make sense? I'm sure it makes sense. Yeah? Cool? Maybe? Okay. Also, I went with this black fabric so that I didn't have to use black floss. Hopefully saving me a little bit of time and still looking cool. Not for the back so much. But yeah. So then I went ahead and did the same steps I did on the last one. Ironed it. Put the iron on adhesive, cut it out, left one eighth of an inch, and started to make the border. One thing, I was having trouble with it. And the thread kept on pulling through with the, and like fraying so I took some glue or some like fabric glue and let it dry. Once it was dry I was able to make the border no problem and add that peel and stick adhesive stuff and we're good to go. Ah! <laughs> Beautiful. So, I actually faked it and I didn't really stick it on my jacket because I'm giving these away to the patrons. Like I always do with the stuff I make, I'm always doing a giveaway on the patrons. So, if you guys want to win one of these two patches, you can go ahead and sign up to be a patron, support me and all the stuff that I do, help me create more stuff, and possibly win one of these patches. Another way that you guys can support me is by giving love to the sponsors. And today's sponsor, Skillshare, is one of my favorites, guys. A professor of mine once told me that, like, in this world, you have to either adapt or die. He was actually talking about business, but I think it can apply to a lot of things, like learning. I feel like the way that we learn nowadays is changing, and a lot of stuff that we want to learn or do in life can actually be learned online. And one of the greatest resources is online courses. So first thing that you're going to do when you sign up is you're going to choose three or more topics that interest you. With that, they'll have like a list of recommended classes. Um, I picked this one just so we can kind of see what it's like. And so I can show you one of the things that I've learned is my favorite thing about Skillshare. And that is this. Each course has like a list of like chapters or steps in the process of learning what you're going to do. And this is nice for me because after learning something, I always have to go back and relearn it but usually not the whole thing, there's usually just like individual things that I've forgotten. And this makes it super easy to find and relearn. Like, maybe how to make fuzzy pizza. So, let's say you found a class you really like, you can actually go and see more of the classes taught by the same teacher. The best part guys, is unlike most online courses classes where you- Courses classes? Unlike most online courses, where you have to pay for each individual video, Skillshare has a premium plan and for $10 a month, you can get all their videos. But because Skillshare is so rad, they're actually going to give the first 500 two months for free. So you can go ahead and try it out. The link to get those two months free is in the description of the video below. So don't die, so don't die on me, guys. Go ahead and learn something. Try to learn something every day. Do something you love every day. And I just feel like that's the best way to open up um, opportunities and rad experiences that you want. Ah! Still. Okay. 
Um, well, I'm dumb when it's not reading the word possible. Well, yeah, but when you're asking what a building is and it says it, that's on you. What? Whoa, this could be a cool shot. <laughs>